Welcome back. I am joined with Shayla Klein. She is a digital reporter here at WBOY, and she has a web exclusive right now on exotic pets. Now, Shayla, exotic pets are either something that's right up your alley or not up your alley. Personally, I'm more of a cat and dog. I don't venture out. But what have you learned about exotic pets? Well, I actually own a sugar glider, so I already know a good bit about exotic pets. Um, but there's a lot that you need to consider before purchasing one, and I want to support um, good animal responsible ownership. Nice. So, um, so basically, I, I decided I want to do more stories about different exotic pets. This is just the start of an exotic pet series, but I want to start off with um, how can you responsibly own an exotic pet. You made a really great point there. So whether it's a cat or dog or something you think is going to be simple or a hamster, you have to know if it's the right commitment for you to make at that time. And then especially if it is an exotic pet, what kind of upkeep goes into it. Now, when we right. talk about exotic pets, we're not talking about things that are too far out there. What's a common exotic pet most people get? Well, actually, it depends on your definition of exotic pet. Um, even things like guinea pigs are actually exotic because they're not from the United States. And um, hamsters, those are also considered exotic. But what people typically think of is like a hedgehog or a sugar glider or a ferret. So, Now, those are all small animals, and I mean, they don't take much um, attention necessarily, you know, do they occupy a lot of your time as an animal? It depends. Um, actually, uh, sugar gliders live to be almost like they could live up to be like 15 years old. Wow. So you have to think about long term how this is going to affect you. Um, if you're getting a, a, a single sugar glider, you do have to dedicate a lot of time to them because um, they are colony animals is what they're called. So they are very social animals. A lot of times people say that they need a, a buddy in order to survive. Right. So um, it I really guess I'm thinking depends. about like a dog. You don't have to necessarily go walk them on your lunch break. But. Right, yeah. I mean, if you're going to get a hamster, I'm sure that you don't yeah. have to like, you know, play with them all the time. Now, so. Shayla, we also have heard a lot about monkeys that's featured in your first segment. We're going to take now to the segment that you can see on our social media pages and on our website. Take a look here. When it comes to, say, monkeys, which I get a lot of calls of those. I say absolutely not. Don't even think about that. When somebody calls for a monkey, I tell them, go have five kids because that's one monkey. So I don't think anybody is ready or prepared for that. And I'm sure there's people out there that will disagree, and that's fine. Um, they'll find out. 